This video was sponsored by Surfshark VPN. In this video, I'll be turning your submitted drawings into realistic adaptations. Whether it's a monster, cute figure, landscape, or whatever else, I'm using Photoshop to either turn these into adorable images or your worst nightmare. W welcome to Realistify. Very good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, my name is Benny and welcome once again to Realistified, the show in which I turn your drawings into sort of realistic images using Photoshop. If you want to send your drawing for the next episode, make sure to shoot them at bennyseditshow at gmail.com, subscribe and most importantly, hit the bell to stay notified about new videos at all bloody times. The first drawing for today was made by Yash. Hi Benny, I feel so inspired when I watch your videos. Could you use this picture for anything? By the way, it's supposed to be a phoenix. Thanks Yash for sending over this image. Let's see what's gonna happen with this one. The wings seem like a good place to start, so I dropped in my first image, this isolated wing. I positioned it as accurate as I could and then used warp to try and match the wing's shape with the drawing. I didn't want to go too precise with the shape, not in a way where every bloody feather is in place. Just a general idea is what mattered to me most. After I thought it's not gonna be better than this, I duplicated that same wing to the right side and used warp again to also adjust this one's shape. After spending way too much time on those, I yeeted in my next image this beautiful eagle. Is that an eagle? It better is. I used my favorite tool to get rid of the background and after realizing Photoshop wasn't gonna do a great job at refining the edge on itself, I used a hairy brush to do it myself. If you want something to go well, you just gotta do it yourself. That's what it always comes down to. I moved the eagle's body around and put it on the right spot. Now I just had to use warp again to get it to look similar to the drawing. I genuinely started questioning the possibility of this thing actually succeeding, but I guess I had hope or something. Turns out that hope wasn't misplaced. For the phoenix's claws, I took these, which are from some 3D model and also move these around. This is where I kinda had to guess what worked best since the proportions were just too different from the drawing's proportions. I had to improvise a little, that's what I'm trying to say. That looked absolutely beautiful, so then to complete the main sort of body, I added the head. For that I used this model and instantly warped it to match the drawing's angle. After I masked away everything but the head, I positioned it and attached it to his body. I already erased some hard edges to start the blending process. Clearly this is dark shit, and in order to turn that dark shit into something you can actually look at without puking, I had to match the colors. I mean, at least a little. Bloody hell, this is a disaster. The body part desperately needed a shadow, so I started painting. This did fix the biggest lighting issues already, but I mean... <laughs> Once the head and body were sort of acceptable, I moved on to the claws to which I also added some shadows. The body, claws and head kinda started to look cool, however at this point it's still like the most regular bird ever and nowhere near an epic phoenix, which it's supposed to become. It was time for some drastic changes. The wings had to be brown and match the rest, so I used hue and saturation to fix this issue. I was honestly surprised myself by how easily that looked cool. I literally needed three sliders to do that. Then I added some shadows to them as well and that actually looked pretty sweet, just not epic enough. I turned the other wing brown too and my hope level increased. I slightly adjusted the head shape because on the drawing it looked a bit more roundish and less eagle-ish. And for now I decided to do the colors later, I first wanted to do the larger head feathers. I took the wing and cut out some of the feathers from that. Those feathers I put right on the bird's head and started moving them around. And at this point I did actually go pretty accurately into it. I made the feathers look brown just like I did with the wings and then added some shadows below them. This I did to the whole party and after some sweating the first two rows of feathers were done. For the feathers behind those I took the wing again and guess what, I again took some feathers. These I also turned brown and added some shadows and highlights to them to get them to look realistic. Apart from the tail, the regular bird part was now finished. Now I just had to turn it into a phoenix. Easy. To make the feathers red, I added some hue and saturation again. I also used color balance to give it a more fiery look, and now it was time to add some variety in color, like the drawing. I made some areas yellow to create that typical phoenix look. I stuck with the original drawing as much as I could, but here and there I just kinda did what I thought looked best. I brightened up the yellow areas a bit to make them pop more and also the claws could use some adjusting. 
The eye kinda lost its soul though, so I breathed back the life into it by enhancing the luminosity and color. Generally, the whole thing was kinda dark, so I decided to increase exposure on the whole thing. This is when it actually started to turn into something lit. Literally. I wanted the class to be grey blackish because I don't know why, I just wanted that. And then it was time for the big mama tail right there. This I did the same kinda way as the feathers on his head. I took the wing, but this time used a lot of warp to match the shape again. I cut off some areas, replaced them with new ones, and to be honest, it's all just a big copy paste situation. It was time consuming, but it ended up looking pretty cool. I copied that whole thing and used warp again to change the shape. After some masking, I considered the shape looking good enough and added the same red and yellow colors to these. First the red, and then the yellow accents. At this point, I was super happy with how it looked, but I didn't really feel the heat. It wasn't fiery enough, not nearly enough drama. I added a cloudy background and made it bluish and reddish. At first, I wanted the wings to be on fire, but I ended up making the lower layer of feathers very bright first to see how that looked. I'm not gonna lie, that looked sick as hell and I couldn't wait to add glow on everything. I made a new orange solid color and started adding some glow to the bright areas of the wings. Just look at that, isn't that epic? This light obviously casted light onto the whole thing, so that's where my highlights came in again. This took a lot of time, but it was definitely, definitely worth it. I made the background a little more fitting by adding some orange brighter areas, being lit by the phoenix's wings. That surely added some dimension to the composition. I still kinda wanted to try fire on those wings, so I dropped in some fire overlays. That's when I knew this was gonna be really epic. To this fire, I added some extra glow to make it pop even more, but of course fire alone isn't good enough. I wanted sparks too, so I used a particle overlay to get that kind of look. And after fixing up the final little things, I called it a day and added a final camera raw filter. This of course made the whole thing look even cooler. I moved every slider I could find, hit OK, and there you go. That is the Phoenix. I'm pretty sure I say this about every episode now, but this has got to be my favorite one ever. Especially considering the questionable images I used. If you like it too and want to purchase it as a metal print to hang up your wall, visit the displayed link below in the description to get one for yourself. Thanks to Josh for sending your drawing, I'll make sure to send this back to you ASAP. The next drawing of today was made by... Surfshark? Wait a second, wasn't today's video sponsored by Surfshark? Ah, yes, of course. While telling you something about Surfshark, I'm also making a special Surfshark realistic drawing because, well, why not? See this as a bonus drawing. Do you want to feel safe on the internet? Being untraceable by literally anyone? Then you'll be very interested in today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is a VPN app that allows you to place your devices in different countries. Not literally, of course, just your IP address. A VPN, which means virtual private network, makes it impossible for any person, surface or anything else to locate your device and it lets you unblock country-bound websites that you wouldn't normally be able to see, for example on Netflix. Since me and a lot of my viewers are spending a lot of time on the internet, it's great to have a decent VPN. I've been using Surfshark for almost a year now and obviously since I'm a huge movie and TV fan, I really enjoy being able to watch anything anywhere. However, I also like how it can block ads and malware using the clean web feature. I've been hacked before, but by using Surfshark I'm decreasing increasing the chance of this happening again big time. And the best thing? You can use one account on unlimited devices. And I've got a special offer for you. If you use my code BENNY, you'll get 83% off plus 3 extra months for free. Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee, so there's nothing to worry about. You cannot tell me that's not a great deal. Use the link in the description below to check it out. I personally highly recommend it. Even though this maybe isn't as epic of a drawing as usual, I still kinda like how it turned out. It looks quite cool. A uh... Surfshark. On to the next drawing. This one was sent in by Dark Gamers. Hey Benny, I hope you're doing fine. I like your videos a lot, so here are three of my drawings. You can pick the one you like. Thanks for submitting. Instead of another creature or character, we've got a landscape this time, which is uh, refreshing. Let's drop this into Photoshop and get started. 
I thought it'd be best if I started by putting all the planets in there all in the right place. I decided the big planet in the middle was gonna be Earth, even though that wouldn't make sense at all since clearly this is Earth, but who cares, artistic freedom. After every planet was in place, I added a star background, scaled it up so it fits and then overlaid another star image to get some nice variety and size and placement. Then yet another star image, but these were actually a bit bigger. This kind of thing adds more life and variety to the image, which makes it less boring to look at. To add some color and haste to the background, I added a blue solid color below the planets. I didn't really know what this was gonna look like though, so I just did some random stuff. Then I did that same thing with a yellow solid color to represent the sunlight. The planets all needed matching lighting conditions so I base it all on the earth in the middle by adding a nice shadow to one side of it. This shadow I now had to add to every single planet I had. Then I decided to make them all a bit bluish by using color balance. That layer I copied all over the place to make sure they all got that same blue tone. I played around with levels to change the distance of the planets and in my head this would have worked better but I guess it was uh, it was fine for now. To start creating atmosphere I made a blue nice glow on the lit edge of the earth that you usually see in these kind of shots. But since the Earth had this bright rim light on the side, the other planets obviously needed that too. I added these blue highlights all over the place until I was satisfied. After that was complete, I added the glow effect to all the other planets as well. But it didn't look like these were actually together in one galaxy millions of miles apart. It kinda looked like a bunch of balloons. But I figured it still looks kinda cool, so who cares if it's realistic or not. Then I changed up the background haze layers a bit, because I wasn't really happy with how those looked. I actually just completely ditched the sunlight and replaced it with a blue one too. Looked way cooler. I played around with levels again to get the black of the planets to look as close as possible to the black of the background sky. That way it looks like they're at least a little far away. In the drawing, that planet had rings though, so of course I needed to add those as well. I made a shape that's roughly the same and made that blue. I subtracted that same shape from it, except a little smaller, and turned that into the actual ring. I enhanced it with my brush and then removed the area behind the planet. That looked pretty sweet. I wanted this ring to glow, kinda like the edits I did the other day, so I added that same glow effect again to make it pop. The drawing had some of these very bright twinkly stars, at least that's what it looks like to me, so for that I used a simple lens flare. I duplicated it and made them look blue to match the rest. These gave the whole thing a very fantasy dreamy look instantly, which I usually don't really like, but in this one it actually looked pretty nice. So far I was happy with the universe, so I decided to move on to the foreground. I found this meadow image which I moved down and used for the main ground. I removed the sky using the magic wand, can you believe it, me not using the pencil, it's crazy. Anyway, I darkened that thing a whole lot and made it look nice and bluish like the rest of the scene. I added some fog in the background and so far that looked pretty cool. To give the grass some more lighting I brightened up some stuff on the top which would be lit by whatever it is lighting up all these other things in this scene. For now that was fine so I yeeted in my first tree and aligned it with the drawings tree. The same thing I did with the second tree and well, basically this is just drag and dropping the elements you can see here sitting on the ground. Not everything really exactly matches the drawing but I guess this is more of an inspired by edit it instead of remaking it one to one. Now I had to blend in all these images. First I masked away the bottom areas, then darkened it up, added some blue, a little lighting too, and yeah, there isn't much to add, it's just more of the same from here. When
when it was all sorta of alright, I decided to add some stuff in the background as well, since it would be strange if these are the only things in this entire grass field. I copied some trees and moved them over to the background. To make the horizon look more alive, I added some more glow there as well. This made it look even more hazy and dreamy, which I kinda liked. I figured there wasn't much else to add, so I decided to add a camera raw filter to spice it up. As always, this made it look a hundred times better again, and after clicking OK, I considered it pretty much finished. This is very different indeed, but uh, I like it. I'll make sure to send this back to you when I can. And just like the previous one, this is also available for purchase as a metal print on this plate. What? Oh no! Let's take a look at the things you guys made using my color code. I looked around on U263 and here are some cool ones I found. This first one, very clean and stylish, was made by Mr. Fahrenheit. Awesome work. Then next we've got Aryan Visuals with this pretty dark image, in which he used the color code for the neon symbols. And this abstract image by Ryan Orlan. Very simplistic and yet very intriguing. If you want to see your edits in my U263 segment, make sure to use the purple color U and tag them with hashtag U263 on Instagram. Let's move on to the third and final drawing for today, which was sent in by Fresh and Jill. Hey, so first off, I have to excuse me because I'm a shitty artist, if you could even call me that. And second off, I love your show or videos. It just makes my day every time I see them. But enough of my bad grammar, here's my picture. Maybe you can do something with it. Hope you'll have a fantastic day. Thank you very much. I actually really like your drawing and I'm pretty sure it's great for this show. Let's yeet this into our software and turn it legit.
And there you go. I think this one turned out fun as well. I'll send this back to you as soon as I can. I really love how in this episode they actually have a background and everything, which really makes them come to life instead of just a plain background like I did with the previous ones. And so, as I said, all of these are available as metal prints on this plate, so make sure to check those out in the link in the description to get these on your wall, if you're interested, of course. Then, once again, if you want to see your drawing in the next episode, make sure to send it to bennyseditshow at gmail.com. And I guess that's it for today. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and most importantly, hit that bell to stay notified about future videos at all times. It's totally free, and you'd support me big time. Anyway, guys, then I hope I'll see you in my next video.